The most important question looming over the House investigation into the January 6 attack is how to punish former President Donald Trump and deter future coup plotters. And it's not an easy one. You can tell by the reports of behind the scenes Jan. Six committee debates over whether to submit a criminal referral to the Justice Department. And by the DOJ's request for transcripts of all the committee's interviews for use in criminal investigations. And by the understandably obsessive public debate over whether Trump will ever don an orange jumpsuit. Dot trust me, everyone, I share that obsession. But as I mentioned earlier this week, we shouldn't limit repercussions for coup plotters to criminal charges. There are several tools at the country's disposal to beat back anti-democratic efforts like Jan. Six in the future. And we should explore each one. Now is the time for true innovation if we want to avoid this scenario again. We don't have an explicit, anti-coup handbook. We're all authors, writing our future in real time. That begs the question of what accountability for insurrectionists looks like for high-level officials like Trump and his inner circle. Is it a measure barring them from holding future office? Civil lawsuits? Criminal charges? All three? As I see it, those are three avenues to accountability being explored. There's the criminal lane, which could obviously lead to jail time, but also punitive measures like fines. Then there's the congressional reform lane, meaning laws passed by Congress to prevent future coups. The committee has said it will produce recommendations once the hearings end. With regard to new laws, that could mean anything from shoring up the Electoral Count Act or seeking to bar Trump and his team from future office using existing laws. I think these are necessary, but could be meaningless to Trump, who has already used the presidency for rampant self-dealing and other lawlessness. Dot then there's the civil lawsuit lane which can feel insufficient but can be used to seek damages from would-be insurrectionists and their enablers. There have already been civil suits filed against Trump and right-wing figures for their role on Jan. 6. I think this avenue could be fruitful, because it potentially recovers ill-gotten gains from leaders like Trump. It also fits a long-held tradition in America of suing extremist groups and their leaders into oblivion. American democracy is relatively new compared to political systems in many other countries. Trump and his team tried to ranch it from us. As a nation, we need to explore all the possible ways to hold them accountable and deter others from following in their footsteps. As extraordinary revelations pour forth about Donald Trump's plot to destroy our political order after the 2020 election, an unsettling question arises. What does it mean that for most elected Republicans, none of what we're learning is remotely disqualifying, either in a party leader or a 2024 presidential nominee? Sign up for a weekly roundup of thought-provoking ideas and debates. At the close of Thursday's Jan. 6 Select Committee Hearing, J. Michael Luttig, a former federal judge widely respected by conservatives, issued a long-term warning. Trump and his allies pose a clear and present danger to American democracy, Ludwig said, and pledged to succeed in 2024 where they failed in 2020. The January 6 insurrection. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6, 2021, insurrection holds its third high profile hearing this month. Find the latest here. Congressional hearings, the House Committee investigating the attack on the U. S. Capitol has conducted more than 1,000 interviews over the last year. It will share its findings in a series of hearings starting June 9. Here's what we know about the hearings and how to watch them. The riot, on January 6, 2021, a pro Trump mob stormed the U. S. Capitol in an attempt to stop the certification of the 2020 election results. Five people died on that day or in the immediate aftermath, and 140 police officers were assaulted. Inside the siege, during the rampage, rioters came perilously close to penetrating the inner sanctums of the building while lawmakers were still there, including former Vice President Mike Pence. The Washington Post examined text messages, photos and videos to create a video timeline of what happened on Jan. 6. Charges, Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio and four lieutenants have been charged with seditious conspiracy, 
joining Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes and about two dozen associates in being indicted for their participation in the Capitol attack. They're just some of the hundreds who were charged, many of which received punishments substantially lighter than what the government requested.